Welcome back to Project 63. You'll remember in the last video we showed you the new engine for the car. Well now we're going to take you back in time to the old workshop and we're going to show you what we did with the cylinder block in the way of preparation and modifications. Right, we've got the cylinder block back now. Genuine Cupress, thick flange S block. Um, back from the acid dipping, as you can see, very, very nicely clean now. With the acid dipping, what you will find is it does actually get inside all of the oilways and water jackets. Inside the water jacket now, there's no rust whatsoever. It burns everything out. So everywhere is clean inside here, down the oilways. If you look around the front edge, inside all the water jackets, everywhere is clean. Okay, we're just gonna check the thickness now. So the standard thickness of a stock block without it being skimmed is 8.890. So that's 8.890. So this one is 8.860. So this one's already had 30 thou machined off the top face. So we've got another 10 thou that we could take off before the pistons will be out of the top of the block. So thickness is okay. We'll just have a look at the bores. So there we're on 73.5. So 1380 bore size. Unfortunately, looking at this one, it's not been offset bored. And you can easily measure that by putting the vernier across between number one and two, measuring that, which you will find then will be the same as this one, between three and four. But when you measure two to three, you will see it's narrower. And that's why head gaskets blow, because people do not move the bores over to accommodate that being thicker. So what we'll do with this one is, we'll bore it out, offset to fit the liners and then we will put the bores back in the liners in the correct place so we'll be back to square one Right, we've got the block back now off the mill and what we've done is we've lightly skimmed by three thou the deck face just to true it up. We've then dropped the, the block onto the milling table and then we've clocked the bottom face. Now we've took three thou off this bottom face for one reason. Because we're going to line bore the block they will actually touch down on the bottom of the main bearing housing and they will machine three thou from there, literally lowering the center line of the crankshaft. So now we've took three thou off there, they're taking three thou off there, everything becomes symmetrical again. And we know we've got a true flat face to bolt the gearbox onto. Okay, here we are back round at the uh, bench. We've fetched the block back round now from being topped and tailed, as you saw in the previous video. We're now just gonna give it a general clean up to get rid of any stress raises, etc., etc. So first thing we do is we'll go round all the edges with a smoothish file just to get rid of any stress raises. You're best off to use a half round, it'll then run into all the radiuses. That's all you need, just to get rid of any sharp edges. There you go, that's what you're looking for. Just a nice smooth corner break. So we're going to go all the way around on the inside, on all four sides, and then we'll go all around the outside. After which then we'll flip him up, we'll do the ends, we'll do this end, and then we'll move over onto the drilling machine just to show you what we do next. Just be careful obviously when you're pulling it around on a bench because you can actually badly score the top face of the block. It's not as bad if you're going to reface the block, which we are on this, but on a 
freshly faced block if you get it faced before you actually do all this just be aware of underneath there and then normally we use some emery cloth just to get rid of any old gaskets any debris etc etc you'll see here the white is the actual caustic soda that's actually come out of the liquid that's used to clean these so we have to get this off otherwise it grows on the blocks it looks quite horrible you can see around here it's growing quite badly what we normally do is just put a, a finish over the top and then it just gives you something nice and clean to work with no we won't face that on the mill that'll be left as stock and just be cleaned up otherwise you'll start altering dimensions in and out and goodness knows what something we would advise to be done obviously we won't be doing it with this block at the moment because it's having liners fitted but if this is a now a fresh block freshly faced freshly bored you will need to remove the top of the block so we'd advise going around with a swiss file just taking the sharp edge off if you look at this block somebody at some point in time has put a 45 degree cut there now that's not a very good idea because if you put a big 45 degree cut just there and a big 45 degree cut just there you're reducing the actual head clamping width so the gasket has not got so much metal to sit on so if you are going to deburr with a swiss file be very very gentle around this area and this area you're okay around here because there's plenty of material but just here 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 if you have a look here Stephen you can see they've took most probably what best part of half a millimeter off that side same off this side so it's reduced that width by a millimeter so your head gasket has only got a small amount of material to climb down onto also obviously before this is built normally we would be counter boring the top of these threads and retapping the holes we won't do that on this at the moment because obviously we're going to fit special liners in here then we'll reface the block and then we'll do the counter boring so what we do now is we'll take the block over onto the drilling machine show you what operations we're going to do next what we're going to do is we're going to take the top thread out of all the holes so that when we tighten the bolts down to pull the engine plates down the timing covers down it doesn't create a burr and disturb the gasket and give you an oil leak so what we normally do here is two sizes up on the size of the bolt so 516 bolt will go 932 bring the drill down we'll preset it so we're only going to go a sixteenth of an inch deep so away we go and we're watching on here now and that's how deep we're going to go bring it round to the next one centralize it and away we go same depth again which is set on here Stephen we'll go down to one inch so we know we're all going to be the same depth may seem a little bit over the top this but believe you me if you do do this it's amazing how well a mini engine seals with oil everybody always says mini engines leak they leak for one reason because they've not been prepared properly and this is one of the preps you must do I wouldn't advise that you do this with a Black & Decker drill either if you're going to use a Black & Decker drill use a countersink don't use an electric don't use a drill bit if you try and use a drill bit it will snatch and it will rip all the threads out of the block okay so that's all the 5 16 ones done we've got three quarter ones here so what we'll do is we'll just swap the drill out counter them in job done so now you've got all those counter board we'll now run a tap down through them it's pretty simple so there we go that's down you don't normally use grease on cast iron cast iron's got its own lubricant in it because it's got graphite in it so there's no need to if it was steel then yes you would be using the lubricant so now you can see Stephen if you close in on that one you've got the counter bore 
and then you can see the nice clean thread that is great that will be a perfect now face to bolt everything down onto so we'll do this side we won't run you through every conceivable thing we're going to do the other side but what we are going to do is we're going to drill the bottom where it bolts to the gearbox out to 516 we're back over onto the sump side now as you know the standard size is a quarter UNF we're going to open these out to 516 UNF so we've got more clamping force to hold this onto the gearbox we counter bore the holes first so we'll start her up and That's roughly where we need to be. So, we'll bring the drill down, and now what we'll do is we'll wind the table up, or down, whichever. So we've got a datum of one inch. So we know now all the holes need to be counterbored with that drill to one inch depth, and it'll give us the same counterbore on each hole. So, nice and easy now. Spin him round, get him in place, fire up, and then down to One in. We'll go round, we'll do all of these studs, stud holes. You'll see now that we've counterboard all the holes. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve holes counter sunk, counterboard, whichever you want to call it. We're now going to drill the hole. Now, these holes are now going to be 516th UNF and the tapping drill, which is the core drill, is 1764. So if you are going to do it yourself, make sure that you get the correct drill, because once it's drilled, there's no coming back. Okay, so 1764 and 516 UNF. So, away we go. Once you get to the bottom of certain ones of these holes, you'll hit a blind hole. There you go. So that's down. Okay, so that's the drilling process. We're now just going to run through the tapping process. We always start tap them on the drilling machine, purely and simply, because it makes sure that they are totally vertical when they're tapped. So what we do is, we take the drill out, we get the tap and we actually put the tap in the machine but we're not going to run it under power we're going to run it manually so take the key out and we put the key in there and what we do then is while we're still over the top of the hole in the central position gentle pressure on the lever and wind the tap in as you start to wind the tap in, you'll feel it pull itself in. As you watch this here, Stephen, this lever. Watch the lever, see it going down. That's the tap actually winding its way in. We're not going to go in very far because all we need to do is just get a start and then we'll hand tap it on the bench afterwards. So there we go. There's out. And now literally wind it back out. And you'll now see we've got the start of the thread in there. You can see the counterbore in the top. So again, beautiful to drop the gearbox on, pull it down on the gasket. The gasket will eat into the top of the counterbore and the screw thread will go down through the center. No oil leaks. Right, back round onto the bench now. As you'll see now, holes are drilled, tapped and counterbored, or should I say start tapped. We're just going to finish tap them by hand now. So. Again, same tap. There we go, that's down to the start. So all we do now is literally just wind the tap through each hole. Now, one thing we didn't mention when we were on the driller, one of the holes that goes through, that holds the sump onto the engine, goes very close to the oil filter head and you have to be careful not to drill into there. Now we'll just show you that as we take this tap out. 
Okay, so the one you need to be careful of is this one here. If you think that you've drilled through but you carry on drilling, you will drill a hole straight down into where the oil filter housing seals. And if you do go that deep, obviously, you've got a big problem. So just be careful when you're drilling this one hole. All the others are either straight through or they go down to a blind hole. All we've got to do now to finish this is tap the rest of the holes. We'll then run through onto the ones on this side. As we showed you before, we will literally just run the tap down the holes just to take any dirt or whatever there is in there out. We'll just run through these three Quartier NF ones now just to be 100% sure. So down we go. Nice and easy these. Just be careful with the taps. They are quite brittle and you can break them if you're a little bit uh, heavy handed. Okay, so there's the final hole now. We're all the way over there. We haven't done the other end yet. We're gonna turn it over, we'll do the other end. And away we go. Like I say, reason for this, gasket failure. If you don't count to pull the top thread out, as you tighten the bolt up, it lifts the top thread which then interrupts with the gasket, lifts the gasket off the face, oil leak. If you prep a block like this properly, it will not leak oil. Okay, now we've 516 all the sump here with the 12 holes. We'll just run you through these sump gaskets that we have produced. They are copper sump gaskets with the holes already cut out to 516 and they fit absolutely beautifully on there, like so. You're not gonna have a gasket fail because of crankcase pressure, which does happen. Obviously, the pressure inside the crankcase gets quite high under duress, and then on the paper gaskets, what it does is it blows them out. With these being solid copper, they will never ever blow out. So, a complete and utter gasket seal again helped with the 516 sump. So that's the 516 sump preparation all complete now. On the next video we're going to run through the steel main caps and the line boring for you. Thanks very much for watching and we'll be back to you soon.